last time I was talking about effectiveness factor in a pellet and uh, we have derived the expression for a straight cylindrical pore the effectiveness factor based on the Thiele modulus calculation and thereafter we discussed it for a spherical pellet. So, as I discussed last time that the Thiele modulus which dictates about the diffusion resistance in a pore of the catalyst or in a catalyst pellet and phi was defined something like r under root of k by d if you look at just a first order reaction where k is the rate constant here based on the volume of the catalyst right so that there can be the different units it can be k double dash based on surface area of a catalyst or it can be mass basis also right so the, the when it is mass basis it will be k dash that is k prime multiplied by the density of the catalyst right if it is based on surface area it will be k double dash times the surface area of the catalyst per unit mass right and then multiplied by the density of the catalyst so that we have discussed d is the defective effective diffusion coefficient when you discuss or talk a pellet r is the effective radius so in some cases you may see as i discussed r is basically the characteristic length and defined by v p by s x right. So, in some case you may see r r by 3 also right. So, that depends. So, r here the eta what we defined is 3 upon phi square phi cot hyperbolic phi minus 1 right. This was the definition which we made last time and uh, that is the Thiele model effectus factor in a pore right. So, depending upon this eta is inversely proportional to phi when there is a strong pore diffusion right. So, this is what has been shown in this graph that if you have a plot of effectiveness factor versus Thiele modulus for the case of isothermal conditions then the initially when the phi is low. So, generally when the phi is low one can say phi is less than 10 or less than 15 right to be a safer side and then it will be a reaction which is free from diffusion resistance right. So, eta will be a large number. So, theoretically when there is no diffusion resistance then eta will be 1 and this is what the initial portion of this curve here right. So, there is no limitation of internal diffusion in a pore of a catalyst, but when there are diffusion limitations like may be particle size may be a problem, porosity may be a problem or the temperature that is the rate constant is very very high right. right? Uh, so, temperature because at high temperature the rate of reaction is very very high right and I defined you the definition of effectiveness factor is global rate divided by intrinsic rate right. So, that may also affect the performance because of this change in the Thiele modulus. So, this is what has been shown here at high value of phi which could be because of various regions right. The, as I said size of the pellet the porosity is very very low right the reaction order may be also high right like this here right. For a same Thiele modulus you can see here if the order is high then diffusion limitations are severe that is effectiveness factor is low right. So, effectiveness factor is the consequence of diffusion resistance and this is related to your rate. So, observed rate will be effectiveness factor that is eta multiplied by the rate which is measured at the surface condition which we said intrinsic rate right. So, if I know suppose the reaction is first order and you know the concentration at the surface then this can be written simply k times C A S right. So, experimentally one can measure this observed rate. Here we have to predict the resistances and then find out the concentration which is given in the bulk that is C A 0 and then what is the concentration at the surface of the catalyst. If there is something like that the film which I am talking here C A 0 and this is C A S. So, this may be different, but when the film resistance is negligible then this is equivalent to bulk concentration. So, that is something again related to another effectiveness factor which is known as overall effectiveness factor. So, I will discuss that point little later. So, one thing 
is clear from this graph that when the thelium modulus is very high, there is the strong diffusion resistance. So, this is the zone where the diffusion resistance is very high, right. It is not a very good kind of design, right. So, one need to control the size of the pellet, one needs to control the experimental condition in order to avoid the diffusion limitation in the pore and this one can do once he understand the basic theory of the catalyst preparation right selection that is the hydro based on hydrodynamic conditions select the particle size and then decide what should be the optimum particle size for the given reaction and optical super optimum superficial velocity in the catalyst right so optimum conditions need to be identified so for first order reaction you have already seen that phi is r under root k by d if you do it for second order it becomes phi for second order reaction will be r under root of k c s to the power n minus 1 something like this for any nth order reaction so divide by d e so k by d times this times c s to the power n minus 1 by 2 something like that right so what i mean to say for any nth order reaction the thelium modulus change so and that you can derive when you when i have written the uh, differential equation then i told you that minus r a so minus r a is equal to k c a to the power n right and that should be divided now c a times c s to the power n minus 1 and that is one term which is associated with the phi right so phi is basically r which is here phi square basically when i said m into l is phi right and that is k by d in the first order pore diffusion reaction. But when in this case it is simply when I write phi square, so it this is r square times k by d times c a s to the power n minus 1 something like this right. So, eta is inversely proportional to phi you have seen that right. So, for any nth order reaction when you do it you can do the uh, derivation of the equation just for one exercise just take the second order case where you have the differential equation for second order right and then simplify the equation. So, all the time you will have the c s to the power n minus 1 when it is nth order reaction right. So, this is what the expression given here the effectiveness factor right if you solve when you have calculated the effect, this thelia modulus then eta effectiveness factor which is calculated again based on the same equation something like this that is global rate divided by the intrinsic rate. So, there also the global rate when you write. So, eta definition says simply global rate divided by rate evaluated at surface concentration. right. So, it means global rate is again k times whatever the concentration which is being calculated and integrating right over the surface. So, if it is a spherical pellet then you have done it like this 4 pi r square d r right and evaluated for the surface. So, only term change is here c a to the power n now right and same thing will be for intrinsic rate. So, that can be defined 4 by 3 pi r cube if you are writing per unit volume basis times the volumetric rate constant times the c s to the power n correct. So, integrate this expression and solve them then you will see that the rate of reaction which is here based on 4 by 3 pi r cube volume if you write in based on mass it will be multiplied by density. So, per unit mass then it will be k dash times c a to the power n right. So, what I mean to say the integrate this equation which you have obtained for c s for nth order reaction. So, for second order you can try for third order you can try and then one can generalize the expression for any nth order reaction. So, effectiveness factor for any nth order reaction which has been defined here is 2 divided by n plus 1 to the power half times 3 upon 5 right. For any nth order reaction the effectiveness factor will be calculated based on this expression. So, for n is equal to 1 this becomes 1 right for n is equal to 2 this will become 2 plus 1 3. So, 2 by 3 to the power half right and so on so on. So, this is 
what the definition for effectiveness factor for any nth order reaction. Why we are doing this? Because I, I want to discuss something the consequences of diffusion resistance in a pellet, right. So, there will be a kind of a disguised kinetics, right, or falsified kinetics, which is just you know now that this phi, which is defined by R, right times k c s to the power n minus 1 divided by d e and square root of whole term right. That is based on here volumetric rate constant. If you write it based on surface then k double dash times s a, s a is meter square per gram right b t surface area. Rho p density of the pellet which can be the bulk density also if it is in the bed right. Then rate will be defined based on the total volume of the reactor basis. C s is the concentration right to the power n minus 1 and divide by d e that is your diffusion that is coefficient d e effective diffusion coefficient and this is your Thiele modulus square right. So, something which is defined based on the kinetic rate divided by diffusion rate and evaluated at the surface concentration. So, based on these two and based on this now certain observations are that if you want to reduce the limitation diffusion limitation in a pellet, then reduce the radius of the pellet that is use a smaller pellet in the catalyst bed right. So, that is one very important thing that do not take very large size particle when you do the kinetics or do the experiment with the catalyst effect right. So, uh, however, other hydrodynamic conditions are also equally important because if you have very fine powder then pressure drop may arise in the reactor. So, you have to tune the catalyst size right that is one thing. Temperature. So, when the temperature is high rate constant k will be high. So, your Thiele modulus value will be high in one way right. So, that but high temperature the diffusion coefficient will also increase right accordingly. So, you have to look at the effect of temperature. So, generally but very high temperature very high temperature meaning that when you are beyond the thermodynamic limits right. The one thing is that the minimum temperature is required to activate the rate of reaction. So, in that case first you identify what are the temperature conditions required pressure condition required for reaction and then when you do the kinetics do not carry out the reaction at excessively high temperature right especially when you screen out the catalyst. The basic idea is that at that time your kinetics is very high right and that possibility may be that diffusion may control the rate. Right. So, that what if you look at just a graph which is something here this gives you the idea about the rate constant k or effective diffusivity d e and you can see here that d e goes like this with temperature right and this graph shows the variation of k with temperature because k is k 0 e to the power minus e upon r t right. D is also given in the same fashion sometime we write it d 0 e to the power minus e d by r t something like that right. The activation energy for diffusion reaction or diffusion is lower compared to the kinetics. So, kinetic control reactions may have activation energy 200 kilo joule per mole, but diffusion control reactions will have activation energy less than 20 kilo joule per mole right. So, the variation or effect of temperature will be more dominating in this case the kinetic right this is your k value. Right. So, so it means the lower temperature zone this is your chemical reaction controlled right and when the higher temperature suppose the experiments are carried out in this zone then the variation of temperature or rate on temperature may not be significant right that time the diffusion may be a dominant term right. So, because k is very very high at that time compared to this d you, you see here the gap is widening right. So, it is a contribution of the two resistances basically the diffusion resistance and the chemical reaction resistance and especially when we have a three phase reactor or two phase reactor we will see the terms right which talks about the diffusion and mass transfer and the kinetic terms right. So, this is one thing and if you look at the slope because this l n k versus 1 by t very standard method of calculating known as Arrhenius plot right. So, l n k versus 1 by t if you look at here this slope is e upon r here for the chemical reaction control right whereas, this slope is e upon 2 r which is for diffusion control I will just discuss that little later right. So, the slope of diffusion control reaction is lower compared to this right. So, that is the meaning what I said that activation energy for kinetic control reaction will be 
higher compared to the diffusion control reaction. So, it means the temperature has some role when you look at the kinetics. So, very high temperature your rate may be very very high right. So, in that case the diffusion may be the controlling. Concentration is again important especially for the positive order reaction. So, higher concentration it means the diffusion may be dominating right and surface area that is again an issue. So, you have to look at the if the surface area is very high right it is good basically right. So, increase the internal surface area. So, in order to eliminate the diffusion resistances or in order to enhance the rate one can look at the particle size, look at the temperature, the concentration and the internal surface area. So, all these will increase the rate. Then, when there are diffusional influences, right, then you have to look at some kinetic study because the kinetics generally, as I said, you have to avoid the diffusion resistance in the pellet, right, or in a reactor. But if these studies have not been done carefully or properly, then it may happen that diffusion resistance has some influence on the overall rate of reaction. What is the consequence or what are the consequences? Let us see here. The first thing is that we call it falsified kinetics, right. So, measurement of the operant reaction order because in general when you write a rate of reaction, you simply say minus R A is equal to K C A to the power N, a simple power law model, right. Then how do you do? You just take suppose ln of minus R A, right is equal to ln of k plus n ln of c a right. One can regress this right equation or one can use the some graphical method. So, either method can be. So, this is your temperature dependent term k and this is your concentration dependent term and this is your order of reaction. So, basically if you plot this versus say c a right it will give you a straight line and from that one can find out k and n right very simple method and then you plot k at different temperature what i have shown earlier so you plot ln k versus 1 by t and you get a slope and this will give you the activation energy right so that has been studied in the homogeneous kinetics the approach is similar right the only thing that here this k and ca they may be affected because of diffusion resistance because I told you that now your observed rate if there is some diffusion resistance it is eta times k c a to the power n something like this right. Where eta is 1 in this case because there were no diffusion resistance, but in this case if there are the consequence of diffusion resistance then this eta is also in picture right and eta is 1 by phi and phi is related to concentration right. So, that may change or alter if you do if you do not know what is the value of this it may affect this right. So, let us see how does it change. So, this is important that operant reaction order and activation energy which you get just from the effect of concentration right and effect of temperature carry out the experiment and do the regression method. So, this becomes serious if the catalyst pellet that is shape and size between lab and the actual reactor and there is a variation right. So, if there is a gap say you have not taken care of selecting a proper particle size then diffusion may affect the rate right. So, if this happens then your commercial reactor or reactor which you have the you are saying that it is a first order reaction actually it may not first order reaction it may be different same thing the activation energy I told you if it is diffusion influenced right the activation energy will be lower because diffusion controlled reaction suppose purely diffusion controlled reaction the activation energy is 20 kilo joule per mole right or maybe 30 low right. When the kinetic controls it can be of the order of 100 or 200 kilo joule per mole. So, if the combination of two it means activation energy is lower, but when you you look at a commercial reactor and you have designed it based on that activation energy or that order of reaction then result will be different right the final productivity or the uh, conversion data will not match with the lab data right. So, that is what I told that is smaller the catalyst pellet you reduce the diffusion limitation right. 
if the activation energy for the reaction or temperature required for reaction is high, because higher temperature favors the reaction of higher activation energy, right. So, kinetic control reaction if they are they will have the activation energy higher than the diffusion control. So, you have to just take care of that, right. And they are more temperature sensitive, right. So, if that is the case, then there may be a runaway condition, transient condition, unsteady state condition because of hot spot formation, right, and that may be a kind of that is uncontrollable situation when you have a runaway condition, especially when you have an exothermic reaction in the catalyst. So, what is falsified kinetics? Just quickly, I have written here, but all of you know this. So, uh, I will go quickly. So, minus R a, what you have defined now is effectiveness factor times this rate which is evaluated at the surface conditions minus R a s, right. So, minus R a s is the rate which is evaluated at the surface condition and we are talking any nth order reaction. So, this is your eta times k times C a s to the power n, right, where your eta is the effectiveness factor. Now, if you look at here, your if I say that reaction is controlled by diffusion, large phi value, right? If it is phi is low, eta is one, no problem. But if phi has some value, then this eta will be defined. Eta, say I told, if you have a cylindrical pellet, a spherical pellet, roughly for high value, it it is inversely proportional to the phi, thiele modulus. So that is what now minus R a rate of reaction. If you look at here that is simply equal to 3 divided by phi times for nth order reaction I told you the definition this is the eta 2 divided by n plus 1 right. So, for any nth order reaction right this eta which is generally 3 upon phi and along with that value right times k c s to the power n as usual. So, now phi value phi is r under root k c s to the power 1 minus 1 divided by d e. So, this is your substitution of phi. So, this is 3 upon r times this is r under root of k. So, this is your k for any nth order reaction. So, k subtracted as n times this is your d e effective diffusivity times C A s to the power 1 minus n, because this n is already there right, 1 is n and this is your n minus 1 by 2 right. So, what is effectively your phi value is written like this r under root of k C A s to the power n minus 1 divided by effective diffusivity right. So, this is C s to the power n minus 1 when you take it to the right c s to the power n minus 1 and this is your c s to the power n already right. So, if you take it inside, so this has become 2 n basically right. So, just solve this. So, this is n minus which is c s to the power n minus 1 that is with negative sign minus 1 minus n 1 can write divide by 2 and this is your n right. So, n minus 1 minus n divide by 2. So, basically this becomes 1 minus n c s to the power n minus 1. So, k uh, by d c s to the power n minus 1 that has been taken to numerator here first. So, 1 minus n and then added to this c s to the power n right. So, this is k c s to the power n. So, now take this n and 1 minus n by 2. So, add them. So, finally, you have eta r which is 3 divided by r. So, let me write it here. So, your r a is equal to 3 divided by r times C A s to the power 1 minus n times d e effective diffusivity divided by rate constant for nth order reaction times whatever your 2 divided by n plus 1 to the power half times k times C A s to the power n. So, this is your expression where this is your 1 up 3 upon phi. So, this value is your phi and this is again whatever the k c s to the power n and this is related to eta for the nth order reaction I told you 2 over n plus 1 to the power half. 
So, this is 1 minus n by 2. So, what is 1 minus n by 2 plus n right, which is your C s power total right. So, 2 n minus n. So, n. So, and this will remain here right. So, that is simply your 1 minus this is 2 n. So, this 2 n minus so n and this will become 1. So, n plus 1 by 2 right. So, what is the term which is written based on this 3 upon r. So, I am just combining now this C a s to the power n plus 1 by 2 right overall rate of reaction which I am calculating. So, this is your concentration dependent and second is your temperature dependent that is your k and written to the power half like this right. So, this is your temperature dependent term. So, k is here and d is here right. So, k is in the numerator rate constant and this is d in the denominator here. So, k c s. So, let me just explain it again. So, this equation is 3 upon r which is phi is defined r under root k c s to the power n minus 1 right. So, that is k is already there and this c s to the power n minus 1 times the second term right. So, eta which is defined. So, let me do it here again eta which is defined 3 upon phi. So, it times 2 over n plus 1 to the power half right. This is your eta value and phi is defined r under root of k c a s to the power n minus 1 divided by d e this right. So, now we are defining your rate which is k eta times k c a s to the power n. So, eta is 3 upon phi. So, this became now your 3 divided by phi. So, I am substituting the value of phi. So, 3 times 2 divided by n plus 1 to the power half and this phi which is so now will become 1. So, phi I am writing divide by r under root of k c s to the power n k c s to the power n times d e divide by d e to the power half is it correct and then times k c s to the power n right. So, we have solved this already. So, c k c s to the power this is k c s to the power n minus uh, n minus 1 here right k c s to the power n minus 1. So, now this when you solve c s to the power n minus 1 it goes to the numerator. So, that is 1 minus n by 2 and this k and this k is there. So, in the numerator you have k to the power this is k to the power half k k to the power 1 here and this is your k to the power minus half right. So, that is case the expression which you get which is a temperature dependent term. So, the numerator will have now effectively minus r a dash is equal to whatever 2 over n plus 1 to the power half. So, other terms are already there which is written here right in this form 3 upon r and then 2 times d divided by n plus 1. So, that is again a term and times the I am interested in this term k to the power half and c s to the power n plus 1 by 2 right. So, this this is what I want to show you here this expression right and basically this calculation is simply eta upon phi and substitute the value of phi which is your r under root k by d when you do it for first order reaction and r under root k c s to the power n minus 1 divided by d e right and eta is 2 upon n plus 1 to the and to hold to the power half right and times 3 upon 5. So, substitution of these value. So, what I mean to say finally, that this is a constant term, this is your temperature dependent term which is k to the power half now here and second is your concentration dependent term which is your c s to the power n plus 1 by 2 right and so now my rate r a dash is some uh, say approximated is whatever the a constant other terms are constant. So, temperature dependent term which is k defined as some 
k 0 e to the power minus e upon r t right. So, e upon r t and whole to the power half right this is temperature dependent. Second term is the concentration dependent C s to the power n plus 1 by 2. So, now this is temperature dependent term and when you take the log of this ln of minus r a right. So, that is disappearance if I write. So, ln of minus r a is equal to half of this activation energy right that is you get the activation energy in terms of. So, if I write it a times whatever the apparent activation energy I will write it now k apparent rate constant right which is half to the power times this is your apparent C A S n dash which is apparent order of reaction basically right. So, I will so apparent order of reaction is basically n plus 1 by 2 right. So, what what I mean to say because of the falsified kinetic. So, I can write it k apparent I will not put half here basically. So, k apparent times C s to the power n dash. So, n dash is your n plus 1 by 2 and E dash is your E by 2. So, what is E dash? E dash has been calculated because you have calculated the effect of temperature now from here that will be from Arrhenius plot. So, Arrhenius plot gives you the slope which I discussed before like this E upon R right, but in this falsified kinetic if you take the slope it comes out to be E by R t to the power half. So, it means E upon 2 R right. So, it the apparent activation energy n dash has become now n plus 1 by 2 and uh, apparent order of reaction and apparent activation energy has become E by 2 right. So, this means suppose your reaction is first order then n dash becomes for n is equal to 1 n dash is not changed. So, n dash is also 1 right. So, order has no problem, but activation energy E dash has become half of the actual activation energy. Suppose actual, actual activation energy 100 kilo joule per mole in this case if the diffusion is controlling you will get 50 kilo joule per mole right. So, that is totally a false information. So, what what is the consequence of diffusion resistance is that your apparent order for n is equal to 2 this change see n dash is equal to now 3 by 2 1.5 order actual order is first order reaction or oh sorry second order, but you will get it 1.5. So, it means the rate of change of concentration which should have been the square of the power now it is just 1.5. Temperature dominance which you have seen now that it just half of the original or actual activation energy which should have been for a kinetic control reaction right and this is known as falsified kinetics right. So, basically the logic is that what we are talking in terms of kinetic control reaction or when you study the kinetics of a reaction because kinetics is very important. You need to size a reactor, you need to commercialize the reactor in terms of the diameter right and height of the reactor and based on the size of a particle. So, you have to make certain assumption when you look at or you design and those assumptions suppose you are assuming a plug flow reactor right. Though, so, it means the H L by D ratio should be high right same thing there should not be any channeling there should not be any axial dispersion. So, these are separate uh, which one needs to study and assess the dispersion number or picklet number and then talk what is the RTD right hydrodynamics study based on that or RTD study then look at the deviation from the ideal reactor that is one thing. But second thing is also especially important in the catalytic reaction that you have to look at your size of the catalyst small reactor versus the large reactor right. The di diameter of the reactor in your lab reactor versus the size of the catalyst particle and the same thing when you look at in a commercial reactor right. And when you when you speak about the kinetic when you evaluate the model parameters you have to also ensure that this is actually the actual kinetic. So, that this n dash should not disguise you right. It should be n only pure n right and same thing for k dash it should be the pure k. It means the reaction should be free from the diffusional resistances right. So, that is the meaning of falsified kinetic basically we have calculated the rate by introducing the factor which is effectiveness factor right.
So, but when there is then you should know that activation energy which is known as operant activation energy, this is known as true activation energy right. So, this is your true activation energy divided by 2, same thing here n is known as true order of reaction and n dash is known as operant order of reaction right. So, we use this word like operant kinetics. So, operant order of reaction right that is your n dash which is n plus 1 divided by 2. So, sometimes we have some criteria or parameters by which one can identify whether diffusion is controlling or not or are we sure whether the diffusion limitation have been have been removed from the reactor or not right. So, these limitations need to be remo removed right. So, for that the criteria which is provided by wedge and prater right known as wedge prater criterion right and basically this is used for the internal diffusional resistances right. So, the definition is same what you have done so far that thiele modulus, thiele modulus you know now square of the thiele modulus is talking about the kinetic rate divided by the diffusion rate right or in other words diffusion resistance to the kinetic resistance and effectiveness factor is your global rate divided by the intrinsic rate right. So, if you take a parameter which is your eta times phi square right because you have already defined your phi right. So, phi has already been defined. So, eta times phi square so, substitute the value of eta, substitute the value of phi square. So, this number comes out to be 3 times phi cot hyperbolic phi minus 1, this is the right hand side right, but we are just talking in terms of the known parameter right. I have already talk, talked about the effectus factor, I have already talked about the phi square thiele modulus and these are defined based on the global rate and intrinsic rate. So, you can see here the eta, eta is your observed rate or global rate divide by rate which is calculated at the surface condition, surface concentration right. Phi square is again rate which is calculated at surface concentration right and divide by that diffusion rate right. We have written last time remember d times C A S minus 0 divided by that d z or length of the pore right d L. So, eta is your r observed divided by intrinsic that is measured at the surface condition. Phi square we have already defined. So, r a s if you define based on the surface area here. So, s a times rho p times r square because r under root k by d for first order reaction or based on volumetric rate constant. So, here it is based on surface area. So, s a times rho p times r square divided by d e right times that is this is divided by d e times C A S because I have written here R A S right. So, just you have to R A S rate which is defined as K times C A S right and this is your definition of thiele modulus. So, now again you have to look at here that phi square is defined simply R square times K for any nth order reaction C A S to the power n minus 1 divided by D E right. So, if I multiply by C A S and divide by C A S so, this is your now k c s to the power n right and that is what written here. This is rate which is evaluated at the surface condition. So, we have divided by c s here. Other terms are same because this is based on the volumetric rate constant when I write it, it is similar to k triple prime right and I have already talked about the relationship between all these terms right. So, one can write in the k dash times rho b or k double dash times s a times rho p right. So, same equation has been written in the form of r a dash also. So, r a dash times rho p times r square divided by d e times c s right. So, just to correlate that eta phi square we have defined here the in terms of r a s. So, now if you look at further this C w p which was your eta phi square. So, now you have already defined your phi square and eta. So, r observed divided by r intrinsic that is actual rate divided by rate which is measured at the surface condition. So, this is your eta and this is your phi square which you have already defined now. So, r a dash based on mass times rho b times 
r square divided by d times c s. So, what is your c w p because these two terms gets cancelled r s r s right. So, this and this cancels. So, r observed times rho p times r square divided by d times c s. So, these terms are now known, these are known terms because if you have eliminated the mass transfer resistance, then your C A 0 is equal to C S right. Experimentally one can verify that and there are similar criteria for mass transfer also or external mass transfer limitation. So, uh, C W P which is defined in terms of observed rate times rho P. So, observed rate is known, experimentally you measure that right, you when you have passed the feed you can see for a given condition of reaction what is the exit mass and then one can calculate the conversion and then one can define the rate right. That is what I told conversion versus W by F naught you can have a plot and then take the slope you can have the rate right. And one can use the same thing that TPD type experiments or TPR type experiment using the reactant feed stock then also you can measure them right turnover numbers or turnover frequency. So, these are now known terms. So, if the criteria says now or which criterion says that if your C W P that is eta into phi square that is defined now based on this. So, these are now calculated numbers. If this is much more less than 1 right, then the diffusion is not controlling the rate right. So, if C W P is much more less than 1, then diffusion is not controlling it means kinetics may be rate controlling right. And if this C W P is much more greater than 1, then internal diffusion controls the rate right. So, same approach what, what has been defined based on phi square. So, earlier we were talking only on phi square right, but phi square if you look at phi square is defined kinetic rate divided by diffusion rate or something like what this. So, here the terms are not known right, d is a parameter k triple prime because you have to do kinetics first. So, this is not known as a priori right and C s concentration again you have to calculate from this way. So, that is ok right, but the terms are not known in terms of the known variable, but here most of these terms can be defective diffusivity you can correlate from the correlation right or experimentally one can check. So, parameters are almost known. So, this is generally used to check or to confirm whether the diffusion is controlling the rate or not, but the lab scale I told you already earlier also that you do the experiment with different size particle right. That you know now that your phi is related to your radius of the particle right. So, what you do in the lab scale generally you calculate the rate observed rate or conversion as a function of the particle diameter that is size of the particle. So, you know that now when the particles are larger in size your Thiele modulus will be high right and Thiele modulus high means your eta will be low right. Eta will be low means conversion will decrease. So, under identical condition, identical condition means fix your W by F in all space time, fix your temperature right and carry out the experiment with different size particle that is 1 mm particle, 2 mm particle, 1.5 mm particle, but after avoiding the mass transfer resistance right. And you will see that the rate is initially like this that is for a smaller particle when you are fine powder and you are increasing the size then it will go like this and finally, it will start dropping right. So, this is the zone which says that the rate is independent of particle size right. So, when the reaction is in diffusion control regime then the rate should be independent of particle that is when the reaction is diffusion control region then rate will drop with particle size. As you increase the particle size the rate is decreasing because you have this term right and when this is in kinetic control region then rate will be independent of particle size. So, this is your kinetic control region and this is your diffusion control. right. So, diffusion controlled regime this one where the reaction rate is controlled by the diffusion resistance right and here you will see your falsified kinetics that is n dash is n plus 1 by 2 right e dash e by 2 
and here you will see just the pure kinetics that is n and the only pure activation energy right true activation energy. So, you need to check it experimentally by looking the rate at different size particles and verify that. The another consequence is the non isothermal pellet effectiveness factor because of the diffusion right. So, one thing uh, it is clear here that when you write a non isothermal pellet effectiveness factor you are writing a con your material balance equation which you already seen for the isothermal case, but beside that you need to write an energy balance also right. So, energy balance again for a spherical catalyst pellet you know something like this you will write a cell balance as usual you have done right. So, this is your 4 pi r square. So, I am just assuming that inward is this right. So, but sign convention just like for diffusion again I am writing input is here and output is here right and how heat will transfer because of the conduction right. So, conduction means your q r flux is minus k d t by d r right or I will use lambda here where lambda is the thermal conductivity of the material right. So, q r you know the equation now flux q r evaluated at r is equal to r times the area of the cell. So, 4 pi r square right minus the same thing heat out at r plus delta r right. So, that is again q r the same term evaluated at r plus delta r right input minus output minus disappearance of heat because of chemical reaction or generation of heat. So, I will write it minus delta h r exothermic heat of reaction right multiplied by the rate of reaction minus r a right and r a dash r a double dash whatever you want to write. So, if you write r a dash it will become 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, I will write it based on the volume of the shell not not the whole pellet. So, that will become 4 pi r square delta r. So, 4 pi r square delta r this is volume of the shell and since you are writing it per unit mass. So, multiplied by the density of the catalyst right mass per unit volume. So, rate per unit mass and this is the heat generated and since you are talking steady state. So, that should be 0. So, what I mean to say I am not going in detail of this, but you need to write a energy balance right. And one thing is clear, it should be clear in your mind that when the reaction is exothermic, then the temperature inside the reaction is taking place inside the pellet, right. So, the temperature at the surface will be lower and in the pellet it will be higher. And you know your rate of reaction is proportional to the rate constant, right, and that has the activation energy term k0 e to the power minus e by rt. So, it means when temperature is high inside the pellet, the rate inside the pellet will be higher right and what is your definition of eta? Global rate divided by intrinsic rate that is actual rate divided by the rate which is measured at the surface right. So, inside temperature is high when the reaction is exothermic then rate inside will be higher here compared to the outer surface. So, effectiveness factor for the non isothermal pellet can be greater than 1. Right. So, this is what is shown here in this graph right and this gives you a kind of runaway condition, this gives you kind of instability here see for phi less than 1 these are there are 3 values 1, 2, 3 same value of phi and this is what the instability right transient conditions and cause the runaway and this will happen right for exothermic reaction in a pellet right and there the temperature inside the pellet will become higher and that will cause the hot spot formation also right. That runaway conditions I told catalyst life will go down right. So, these are some problems in the catalytic reactors especially when the reactor uh, reaction is exothermic. So, partial oxidation when you do say methane partial oxidation right it, it is exothermic process compared to the reforming which is highly endothermic right. But the problem is that the control of these kind of reaction exothermic reaction are very difficult right. So, industry face problem when you look at the design of these kind of reactors because heat is to be removed from the catalyst surface simultaneously right otherwise it will damage the catalyst. So, the equation which is just you need to write a contribution of 
energy balance equation which is written here first. So, if you look at here the details of this I have just shown here very quickly I will go through this. So, overall your reaction which is now if you just write this equation which is written here now 4 pi r square q r is minus lambda d t by d r at r same thing evaluated at r plus delta r right minus delta h r into minus r a dash times 4 pi r square delta r right. So, that is equal to 0. So, divide by 4 pi r delta r, 4 pi delta r and take the limit 0 r delta r tends to 0 the same way as we did earlier. So, quickly I have written here to here. So, your equation becomes 1 upon r square because this is this r square has come because you are divided by 4 pi r square. So, 1 upon r square and d over d r of r square already inside because that r square you cannot take out right d over d r of r square q r right. So, basically this is lambda d t by d r is q r. So, this is the term which is because of the contribution of two terms which is shown here if I just write it here r square q r at r minus r square q r at r plus delta r. So, this thing you must have read before right. So, 4 pi r square q at r that was the term which is written here and when you divide by delta r. So, divide by delta r and take the limit delta tends to 0 right. So, this will become d over d r of r square q r which is here the two term. So, d over d r of r square q r. So, q r is my lambda d t by d r right because I am taking input positive output negative right that sign convention choice is yours. So, Fourier's law of heat conduction has been used here. So, last term because we have already divided now 4 pi r square delta r. So, that term is simply delta h r times minus r a triple dash. So, I have written it here volume basis if you write r a dash it will be multiplied by density right catalyst density pellet density. So, this is your equation for energy balance one equation that second one is your mass balance equation which is written again that we have already done before. So, based on the same thing that is your diffusion d d su by d r right. So, 4 pi r square times w a r at r same thing at r plus delta r and minus the disappearance because of chemical reaction right. So, minus minus r a dash times 4 pi r square delta r times rho v. So, same expression you will get which you have already done before like this right. So, 1 upon r square d over d r. So, this is your fixed law of diffusion d d c by d r since the pellet is spherical. So, r square r square the same term here right minus minus r a triple dash times 0 because it is disappearance because of chemical reaction. So, if, if you do not have this term you have studied this thing in your transport phenomena course also r square q r is a constant for heat transfer and here also r square w a r is constant for diffusion flux right if there is no chemical reaction. So, now you can write your minus r a dash from this equation into this equation just to correlate the heat heat equation right. So, minus r a triple dash from here can be substituted in this. So, you have the equation which will become something like this. So, just as an exercise you can you solve it and then check the final value right. So, then this this is simple mathematical transformation of minus triple r a triple dash from this equation into this because we are interested in correlating the variation in t as a function of r right. So, once you have this equation you can just look at that and this equation will come something like in this form because your all the term this is also d over d r of r square lambda d t by d r here it is d over d r of r square d d c a by d r. So, these all terms have been clubbed together in one differential form. So, one is your concentration term another is your temperature dependent term right just interpretation from this differential equation which is written in this form here and here it is again the term inside the bracket they are similar right. So, r square q r or r square w a r flux right. So, based on the mass flux and based on the heat flux. So, if you do it further so very quickly I have done integration of this or solution just. So, that is the equation which you have drawn now. So, r square d over d r of lambda t times d e minus delta h r this is from this equation same equation which is written here and 
So, lambda t d e times minus delta h r plus C a and the first integration has been done right, because it is a function this is whole term is a constant. So, is equal to a constant. So, one can take C 1 on the other side also just for simplification. So, what are the boundary conditions? So, one will be for concentration another is for temperature right. Concentration boundary condition you have already seen right and temperature boundary condition means R is equal to capital R surface temperature is known T s that will be your original condition right T is equal to T s surface and R is equal to 0 at the center because of symmetry d t by d r is 0 right. It is similar thing there we said concentration is finite right. Here we are saying that d t by d r because of symmetry it will be finite or uncancelled temperature is finite it cannot be infinite right. So, but only thing that since it is exothermic in exothermic reaction it can increase also. So, it is advisable to use the boundary condition which is d t by d r is 0 at the center. So, this equation which is written here based on this boundary condition. So, your equation is now first integration has been done and now do the second integration. So, this is C a plus lambda t d divided by d times minus delta h r is equal to now integration of this because this will go to here on the other side C upon r square right integration of this gives you minus C 1 upon r. So, we now we have taken it on the other side. So, this choice is yours how do you take on that side or this side right simple mathematical integration of this differential equation right. So, basically the first has been done here because this is d over d r of this. So, if you integrate this the whole term is a constant right that is written here right and second term is which is again in terms of this. So, I will continue it next time and uh, um, then I would like to conclude it in the next lecture. Thank you.